Is becoming a Christian the new trend? God's been calling me for a long time, and the devil's been distracting me for a long time. Massive YouTuber by the name of Gideon mm. announced two days ago yep. that the video that he was putting out was going to be his last video on his main channel and that he was going to be starting a new channel devoted completely to the promotion of Christianity and his faith. Hello friends, welcome to Set Up Our Dives. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nadia Mar, and I basically make videos about my Christian faith, social trends, politics, things that really interest me. You know, I react to interesting videos. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to this channel. But in today's video, guys, we're gonna dive deep into this whole trend that I'm noticing where people are coming out as Christians. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but there was like this period between 2014 to like 2019 or so where everyone, it seemed like every celebrity, some YouTuber were coming out as either gay or trans or whatever else. But I think the pendulum is really swinging to where people are sort of coming out more and more as Christians. And you might ask yourself, Nadia, who you're talking about? Let's start with Greg Jenko, who has been talking more about conversion to Christianity. And I don't mean to get biblical on you guys, but like, read read a passage in the Bible. Never once does Jesus just show up at your house to give you your blessing. Never. He waits for you to come to him. You have people like Kat Von D, who was this tattoo artist. You know, she recently had a whole very public baptism and saying how she is a Christian. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, even people like Tristan Tate, you know, had a whole interview and he was talking about about his Orthodox Christianity and how he is a Christian. When did you become a Christian? Shortly after moving here. I, I was disenfranchised with Christianity and I thought, you know what? I looked around England and the way society was collapsing and the way Christians behaved. I mean, this pride flags in churches, this is a relatively new phenomenon, but let's just say it started with versions of reality I saw like that. And I thought, you know, Christian, Christians don't really stand for anything anymore. I challenge any atheist to walk around Romania and just insult Jesus Christ to the normal Romanian man. People say, oh, well, if you insult the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Muslims will punch you in the face. Go and do that in Romania and insult Jesus. The Romanians stand for something. And I saw how Christianity holds this country together. You couldn't wear that watch in London. Walking around London with that watch and no bodyguards, could be a death sentence. Also, certain people like Shia LaBeouf has been talking a lot about his problems with substance abuse and, you know, just being depressed and just having some serious mental illness and how his conversion to Catholicism and becoming Christian is the new phase of his life. He found meaning and wholeness in Christianity. I don't know. I felt one word safe. Um, uh, there's like a, I don't know, a deepening, like a, a maturation in my faith is starting up and Confirmation is a big part of that, you know, giving me permission really. It feels like, uh, you know, I, I was never able to really um, take part in Mass fully until today. And then most recently, you know, I just came across a podcast, you know, where Kelly Stamps, who's a famous YouTuber as well, and she was talking about how, you know, she was in the world of influencers and just having very shallow connections and just how, you know, she found these Christian friends and you now how she's embracing and talking more about her Christian faith. I would rather inspire people to just live a life maybe a little bit more like Christ because I try to do that all the time. You just didn't know because I didn't always talk about it in the past because as a people pleaser, I don't want to make people uncomfortable. Mm, and so you were afraid that people upon hearing you reference your faith might yeah, push decide to stop watching. Yeah, because there's a lot of reasons to not like Christians. I live in the heart of it in Dallas currently. And let's also mention like what, three months ago, we had Gideon, you know, who is like a big famous YouTuber with a bunch of subscribers, you know, and he came and said how he's surrendering his life to Christ. And you know, he stopped making videos on his main channel and he's creating a second channel to talk about his faith. He really wants to be a real genuine Christian, wants to walk the talk. I just had to like look at myself chat and I had to just think if I do follow Jesus, if I do follow his word to tooth the nail of what it is front to back, then I'm not going to be Judeon anymore. Not just celebrities, YouTubers, you have like, you know, 
also very prominent intellectual figures, you know, like Jordan Peterson, who is quite obsessed with Christianity. He does his Genesis series and Exodus series. You said in the Bible, one of the things that's remarkable about it is the conception of the divine. So the conception of what is of highest worth. Now, everyone in the high circles are talking about Jesus. And here's the thing, you know, there's this whole layer of people who are converting to Christianity, but then there's also this like really polar and weird opposite group of specifically musicians and artists who are just like mocking the life out of Christianity, right? Like they have almost like this whole beef with Christianity, you know, people like most recently, shall I say, you know, Little Nas and doing his whole blasphemous crazy I even refuse to watch the video. I literally refuse. I am not about to violate my eyes. On one hand, you have people who are, you know, seeing the positive about Christianity, embracing it at various degrees. And then you have this whole Hollywood, you know, music industry that is just simply like mocking the life out of it. Is it just me? But it's like everyone obsessed with Christ and Christianity in some form or another. In today's video, guys, I not so much want to go into the genuineness of all of these celebrities' conversions and whatnot, I'm more so, even though I will have something to say about that at the end, I more so want to sort of give certain theories as to why is this happening. Is the pendulum really swinging back to a Judeo-Christian worldview? Without further ado, let's jump into a couple of the reasons why I think we are seeing this renaissance perhaps you know of christianity where people are like you know what maybe jesus was right all along so i think one of the first reasons why i believe that we're seeing this you know this pendulum swinging towards christianity is because 2020 <laughs> shall i say more 2020 was quite the year that made a lot of people think i think when the whole COVID lockdown a lot of people had a lot of time on their hands to just really think about life think about this you know if prior to 2020 you know we were sort of buzzing everyone was so immersed in their careers and works it's almost like we were forced to sit down and reflect about our lives like we've never done before in history. It's like everyone was locked up and everyone was thinking deeply about their life. And I think a lot of people had some serious realizations about how chaotic the world is. You know, and a lot of people realized, you know what, just from the way the government's handling COVID, you know, it was just like the peak of wokeism, political, you know, craziness that was occurring with Black Lives Matters and and Antifa and 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 all these crazy things that were happening that people were like, wow, there's just so much chaos and this whole thing about wokeism and pushing the transgender ideologies out, you know, and all of a sudden we as a society are okay with mutilating our children, offering them gender affirming surgeries, you know, that we're okay having people like Dylan Mulvaney, you know, driving the narrative, I think it woke a lot of people up and we realized, you know what, this world is quite spiritual. This whole thing of us killing God, you know, in order and a Judeo-Christian worldview has not done us a favor. Clearly, we've not replaced with anything that is sensible or reasonable. Removing God from society, you know, and I'm, when I say God, I'm talking about a God with a moral law. You know, that the God of the Bible, not just, you know, some kind of universe God, you know what I mean? But I, a God who has a standard for the way humans should live, right? When there's a lot of chaos going on, I think people start to crave order. Even though the majority of people are just getting lost in the sauce, I and I think a lot of people sort of make their way back to Christianity. Not so much maybe perhaps like having a real relationship with Jesus and then having a born again experience as much as well, Christianity gives me a sense of order, you know, it gives me a sense of moral guidance. So I'm going to go back to Christianity. I'm just going to go back to that because clearly we have not found, you know, wokeism is not the best alternative. So I think there was a big group of those kind of people. You know, and I would say a lot of people like Jordan Peterson, you know, they were the embracing or becoming more friendly with, with, with Christianity and moving away from just hardcore atheism is because of that, you know, well, we saw what, you know, loss of God does to a society, how a society degrades. And then I want to talk about the second reason why I think a lot of people are turning back to Christianity, which I think is the increased superficiality, you know, and I think this has to do with technology as well. I feel like, you know, this new age of social media and Instagram and TikTok and where people are just sort of lost the genuine art of connection of just 
connecting with people in person, having wholesome conversation, you know, where so much of our interaction has become virtual. I think people are really craving depth craving, you know, some kind of, you know, in, in the whole world of materialism, you know, we realize, you know, all of this material stuff that we have does not really satisfy or calm down our fears and our anxieties and our depression. So I think people started asking bigger questions, you know, what is really the meaning of life? You know, why are we here on this planet? You know, how is it that we have, you know, all this material goods in the West, you know, we have relatively good houses, you know, we are, we're not starving, but why are we depressed? Like, why are we sad? Why are we addicted? Why are we just like, you know, why are relationships so shallow? You know, why is it all about just the, the glory of a moment? And I think with a lot of superficiality of society, people are now craving depth, real connection, real substance. And I think Christianity, you know, when, if you immerse yourself into it, you know, like you start asking questions about faith and just spirituality in general, you know, Christianity offers this whole sense of like, there's an appeal of Christianity where it's about a relationship with, you know, what people would call a higher power, which is not how I believe that, you know, obviously it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. But, you know, people from the talk of the higher power, people kind of saw the appeal of Christianity, you know what? It's about me having a relationship with Jesus. So a lot of people moved into Christianity looking for depth, you know, because there's a deficit of depth and real connection and a real satisfaction with life. You know, a lot of mental health epidemics with anxiety and depression and special things produced from COVID, you know, people were asking, were looking for spiritual answers, you know, not the kind of answers from, you know, that, you know, like just new age, you know, crystals and, you know, and chakras provide, but real confrontation with the self and, you know, that you need to change your life, that there is something that you, you know, Christianity is, you know, the, the thing about Christianity, you know, even though Christianity is about you coming as you are, Christianity is not about leaving you where you are. You're called to live a holy life. You're called to live a transformed life. Having a relationship with Jesus should move you to embracing God's standards, God's outlook for life of, of humanity, you know, for humans. And so I think there was like a really big appeal of that. And I think also another thing that I will say is loneliness is another big factor where I see, we see this rise of Christianity where people are like, you know, why am I so lonely? You know, why am I surrounded by all these people, you know, but it, all these connections feel superficial. And Kelly Stamps talks about this quite a bit in, on that, in that interview that I mentioned. Um, she talks about this, you know, being an influencer, just but being surrounded by superficiality, by people who don't really care and feeling sort of lonely, you know? And I think that is a very much an epidemic where a lot of people surrounded by these shallow friendships are feeling very lonely. And, you know, and Christianity is about having a personal relationship with God, having a personal relationship with Jesus and really being satisfied spiritually, you know? And I think there is this move where people are embracing Christianity because there's this appeal of having a personal relationship with Jesus, you know, which it is absolutely satisfying. And so if people are out of their loneliness, moving toward God, you know, that's amazing. And having right fellowships with people, having Christian friends, you know, who want something more out of life than just hooking up and drinking and wasting their life away, right? So I think there is that move of, of superficiality and people feeling lonely and all of them driving people towards Jesus. And the last point that I want to make where I feel like why people are moving towards Christianity is because we've realized that the sexual revolution has done us no good. And Louise Perry, you know, who I talked about where she talks about the case, where she in her book, she talks about the case against sexual revolution. She talks a lot about this, but this whole idea of freedom, you know, we can just, you know, we have multiple options. We just can go on Tinder. You could pretty much be hooking up every night if you wanted to. You know, this whole so-called freedom, we're realizing that has not moved us towards meaningful, truly stable relationships where people end up married, having kids and real families and, and feeling happy in their relationships. I think people realize that, you know, this whole culture of hooking up and, you know, being on and off and, you know, talk, add to this, you know, the whole thing with like OnlyFans, this whole sexual promiscuity. I think a lot of people are just sick and tired of that. They're sick and tired of these shallow, 
you know, momentary because, you know, we bought into the lie that sex is just a consumer good, you know, it's just a transaction. And when people through experience carry the pain of how not true that is and how it really bears consequences on their psyches and, 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 and their hearts and people are heartbroken and a lot of people didn't end up in substance abuse as well. You know, I think all of that, you know, where people are just like, you know what, we bought into a lie. This is not true. And I think what Christianity offers is like when we talk about, you know, no sex before marriage, being holy, being pure, you know, caring, you know, where Christianity talks about these things, you know, calls you towards a standard of holiness, keeping yourself for one person, understanding there is meaning to sex, you know, all these things. I think there's a big appeal where people are seeing, you know, well, I've tried living a life that is promiscuous and on one night stands. And now I really am realizing that maybe Jesus was right, you know, maybe Christianity was right all along about, you know, how we should conduct ourselves so sexually, how we should look towards marriage, you know, how we should really commit ourselves because just having more options and having more experiences doesn't make you happier. In fact, it leaves you more broken and leaves you feeling feeling meaningless, you know. I also think a lot of women bought into this whole feminist lies that you know it's all about working for the matrix and you know being a boss babe you know and having this independence and having all these degrees you know and just postponing you know families and having kids and all these things i think a lot of women also have realized you know what they're going into their 40s you know and they're childless they don't have a family they don't have meaning a husband right like so there's a lot of brokenness in that, you know, and I see a lot of also move of women going back to Christ and being like, you know what, that was not the right choice. I bought into a lie that was, you know, there is that that was not the right choice, you know, or even men being promiscuous and pornography and all these things, just leaving people broken. And I think Christianity has something to say about all of those things. And because Christianity, unlike other religions, you know, I would say, especially the ones that are popular here in the West, like, you know, just new ageism, where it's all about experience and yoga and chakras and all this, you know, where these those Eastern things don't provide a structural, a moral structure, or don't require much of a change from you on a personal level. Christianity has demands a change of life. And I think there is this huge appeal. And I think that's why we're seeing YouTubers and celebrities and 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 people who are in high places you know having a much more positive outlook or just genuinely embracing christianity now to end my video i do want to say however that you know even though i didn't want to go into the motives you know like we don't know fully the hearts of people you know like in their embrace of jesus you know just because you profess to be a christian doesn't mean you are one you know and just because you say that you love christ you know doesn't mean you're a christian because jesus if you're not a do if you're no if you do not obey my commandments you're not a christian you don't love me you can profess with your mouth and there will be plenty of people that on judgment day jesus will say depart from me i never knew you you know, even though they will claim to be like, oh, we did this in your name, we did that in your name, Jesus say, hey, I never knew you. So clearly, you know, just saying that you're a Christian or saying publicly professing your Christian faith means very little unless that faith is really, really reflected in a personal change where you've really encountered the risen Christ and you really understood what Jesus did for you on the cross and it, you now live a changed life and it affects everything from the way you speak the people you hang out with, events that you're part of, you know, where, you know, how you, your relationship with sex, you know, with your relationship with money. A life of a Christian is a submitted life to the will of God, to the standards of God. But I do see a lot, you know, where all these celebrities and YouTubers, you know, are coming to Jesus, supposedly, proclaim Jesus and still have their worldly lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, even Tristan Tate, you know, he says he's a Christian, but like the things that he promotes are very you not know, christ-like you know you have people who you know say they're a christian but they still cuss you know openly on their channel and just keep on you know and it's like okay you're a christian i get it but why isn't like why is there not a change in the way you speak you know like is it okay to be a Christian and keep on cussing, right? Like, is it okay to be a Christian and still live a promiscuous lifestyle? Is it okay to be a Christian and still, you know, make satanic music, you know, like Kevin D still does, you know? Like, is it okay to be a Christian and still 
be okay with gay marriage, right? Like, and being part of those things, you know? So when it comes to the personal things, you know, there seems like there's still not quite a change. You might say, well, you know, it's everybody has their own journey, you know? Maybe they're not convicted of sin right now. Maybe they will later on. And who are you to judge? But the truth is, like, Bible is very clear. Don't be deceived. Just because we're going to have this big volume of so-called Christians right now, you really have to be discerning, you know, and really pay careful attention, not following these YouTubers and these stars, but really following the Word of God, following what Jesus said, following Christ, not celebrities and, and their faith journeys, but really focusing on reading the Word of God, paying attention to, to what Jesus says, having a personal relationship with Him, and being transformed into his image to understand that we are called to a holy life as Christians. We're called to a set apart life as Christians. There's no such thing as having one foot in the world and being Je and loving Jesus. But a lot of people want to sort of like mash that together. And Jesus says, no, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve, you know, Mamoa and serve me because you cannot either love one or hate one. But there is not, there is no such thing as loving the world and loving Jesus. And I think the danger with a lot of these prominent people is that they want to be in the world, but they don't want to walk away from the world system, you know? And so you, and, and I hope for all these Christians who have become, who professed, I really hope that they had, that their conversion was genuine. And I really hope that they live a holy life. But I think it's also important as Christians to understand that we should not just follow their lifestyles you know because i think there's a danger of like looking at their lifestyle and thinking just because they said they're a christian it's okay to act like this as a christian it's okay to just cuss on your channel so it's okay to be promiscuous here and there you know it's okay to be this no it's not okay if you're a christian you will have a transformed life and jesus always said this but their fruit, you're going to know them. Not what the, what they say. If the walk doesn't match the talk, you need to sort of pay attention, be careful, be discerning, you know? And that's what I thought, you know, it's like, is it becoming just trendy? Because society for a minute got really chaotic and all of a sudden people are like, you know what? I'm running back to Jesus, <laughs> you know? Or is this a genuine, genuine interest in in the gospel. But like I said, there will be a lot of people who will convert to Christianity for the wrong motives, for the wrong reasons, for not genuine reasons, you know, for either a little bit more morality, for a little bit more order in their life, or a little bit more structure. Those are not the right reasons. You have to hate your sin. You have to see what Jesus did on the cross and understand the implications that it had upon your life and humanity in general. And honestly, don't put these people on pedestals. That's another thing I want to say, you know, follow the word of God, follow Jesus. Don't put any pastor, any celebrity or YouTuber on a pedestal. Put Jesus Christ on the pedestal. He is the standard. He is the example. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I thought you found these thoughts and just observations of what's happening in the culture interesting. If you like this video, consider commenting, liking, and subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.